In this session, we're going to look at how we can use raster design to clean up an image. On my screen, I have a detail sheet. The sheet's part of a plan set. In the upper right corner, I've got some room to add another detail. Let me zoom in on that area. The detail that I'm going to add in this case is going to be an image. It's a TIFF image. It's bitonal, meaning it's all black or all white. No grayscale in this case. To insert the image, I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer. I will then select the image file and I'll drag this into my drawing. I'll click to set the lower left corner. I'll drag this out to assign the height and I'll press enter. So this looks good. That is until I zoom in. If I zoom in on this file, you can see that this image contains quite a bit of noise. In fact, so much noise that you might at first think that this image is unusable. Not a problem though, we can use raster design to eliminate all of these unnecessary pixels. Raster design is an application that runs on top of AutoCAD. In this case, I'm using Civil 3D, which is an AutoCAD based product. Raster design is included in all of the suites and the new collections. So chances are you may have this application already. To use raster design, I will select its tab from the ribbon. First, let me apologize for my screen size. It's not allowing me to see all of the tabs up here. Let me click the double arrows and I'll come down and choose raster tools. Then once again, a screen size thing. When I use my cleanup tools, I'm going to want to see a few extra lines here at the command line. So let me drag this up so I can see about five lines. To clean up the image, I'm going to go to the edit panel. I'll open the cleanup menu and I'll choose despeckle. As soon as you launch the first command, it loads the raster design module. I can then identify how much of the image I'd like to clean. You can see there's several options down here at the command line. In this case, I'm going to clean the entire image. Next, I can identify the size of the speckle I'd like to remove. Once again, there's several options down here for determining speckle size. Note we can also select the speckles on screen. Let me zoom in and I will click to select one of these speckles. Right here we can see it's a one pixel size speckle. Note that based on that size, we can see all of the speckles that are targeted for removal have been changed to red. Now I'd like to grab a few more here. Let me come down and choose Respecify Size and I'll choose one of these speckles that's slightly larger. There we go, that looks better. Let me zoom out. I will then press Enter to accept that selection and you can see that removed hundreds of thousands of dots from this image. Now, if I zoom in, we can see that we have a couple of additional rogue spots in here. So we'll clean this up in two passes. I'm going to run the despeckle command again. Now, before I run it a second time and go for the larger speckles, I want to make sure that I don't damage my concrete hatch pattern. These dots here may be confused for speckles. Likewise, I've got some text down here. I don't want to accidentally remove these periods or these dots in the eyes. If you look, you can see we're still in the command. Once again, I'm going to despeckle the entire image. And when it comes time to choose a speckle size, I'm going to select one of these dots. Here I can see that this is a five pixel speckle. So I know I don't want to go that large. Let me come down and choose respecify size. And this time I'll choose a speckle size in pixels. Let me select that option at the command line and I'm going to type four and I'll press enter. Let's back up and see what we're getting. Here we can see it's getting most of these remaining large ones. If I pan over, I can see that it's also grabbing quite a few of these spots in my hatch pattern. Let's zoom out. Notice at the command line, we have the option of removing speckles from the selection. And you can see there's a few methods we can use. I'm going to select the polygon method, and then I will trace around my curb and gutter to remove these speckles from the selection. I'll press enter when finished, and then I'll press enter again to complete the command. I will then press escape, and at this point, we don't need to see the additional lines here at the command line, so we'll drag this down, and then I'll zoom in and take a look. Looks like we have just a couple of rogue spots left. To clean these up, I'm going to use the Touch Up tool. Touch Up works with bitonal images. After I launch the command, you can see the toolbar. We have a couple of different brush options. We have the square, the round brush, and the diagonal brush. We can also use this option to resize the brush. You can see the current size on screen. To resize a brush, currently I'm using square in this case, I can click resize and then I can just click and drag out the size that I want. To remove these remaining spots, I'll just hold down the left mouse button and paint them out. Just to give you an idea of what's going on here, let me click to toggle the drawing color and then I'll paint again. Here you can see I'm painting with black. So that's all we're doing. Let me click the toggle again and I'll paint this out. I'll paint out that spot. Looks like I've got one here and here. And I believe at this point, everything has been cleaned up. When I'm finished, I'll click the check to accept my touch-ups. 
And now that I'm finished cleaning this image, I can come up and click the Save button. This will save my changes back to the original image file. That way, if I want to use this image in the future, I don't have to go through the cleanup process again. Finally, I'd like to hide this image frame. I'll do that by going to the Manage and View panel, and then I'll click the Toggle Frames button, and then we'll take a look at this in a plot preview. Let me come up and launch Plot. I'll choose Preview, and then we'll zoom in on that detail. As you can see, using raster design, we were able to take a detail that was almost unusable and make it suitable for use in our production drawings. Would you be interested in exploring other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.